All right, everybody, we're going to talk about making some uh, pipe networks. The first step we're going to need to do is to create a parts list. A parts list is all the different parts that are contained within our part network. Those things may include different sizes of pipes. They may include things like manholes and catch basins and anything else that are included in your network. So what I'm going to do first is uh, in my drawing, I'm going to go into my settings tab and I'm going to have to go to the pipe network section and check out what's listed under parts list. There's some defaults there, uh, but uh, you can make your own as well if you want. So I'm going to create a new parts list. I'm going to pretend that this one is for my storm network, so I will call it storm parts. And I'm going to ask what types of pipes I'm going to need. So this is where you're going to need the different types of pipes. So if, uh, for instance, you needed um, some circular type pipes or rectangular channels, whatever that is, you can add those in here. So in this case, I may have some concrete pipes and commonly some PVC pipes as well. And you can add them all in here as well. That'll create two folders for you. They're empty. You're going to have to add the part sizes to these part families. So under concrete, pipe. I'm going to right click, go add part size, and usually what I do is I just select all sizes and then say OK. And then what I'll do is I'll just get rid of and remove the ones I don't want. And then that way uh, I don't have too much clutter in my list. And you can do the same for your PVC pipes. Add those in as well. Click add, say OK. And then take a look at what parts you need and uh, delete the ones that you don't and then the same with the structures. So in your structures list you can add in a new part family if you're looking for a particular type of manhole commonly uh, a two-tiered structure uh, circular frame is a fairly common type of manhole structure you can add that one in if you want and then say OK. Same thing you have to right click you've got the part family you have to add the part sizes to the part families as well so you go add part sizes and uh, if you want, you can add in the different types of frame diameters or the uh, inner structure widths might be a good option as well. I usually like to go add in all different types of frame diameters. Say OK. That'll give me a whole bunch of different sizes. And any ones that you do not need, you can go ahead and remove, just like you did in your pipes. So what you should have is you should have two tabs, uh, pipes and structures with all your pipes list in them. So when you're finished, you should be able to check your parts list and your part network, go under edit, and you should have all your pipes listed that you're going to use for that network, and uh, as well as all your structures also. And remember, if you forget to add some in, you can always come in and add some later on if you want. That's not a problem. So we can say, okay, the next thing we're going to have to do is add in some rules to apply to those parts. Because if we go back to our storm parts, you can see that I've got a column for rules. I want to add a rule to make sure I ensure proper the amount of cover and the amount of slope, uh, pipe lengths, things like that for all of these different pipe sizes. So I'm going to have to create the parts list next. So I come under the pipes. I'll start there and I'll go under the pipe rules set here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new rule. And uh, let's say I start off with uh, maybe a rule for all my 300 uh, millimeter PVC pipe. And in that case, I'm going to say apply, and then I'm going to go to the rules tab. I'm going to add in some rules. So I'm going to want a rule for, for instance, slope and cover. I'll add that in. And I'll also want a rule for maybe a length check to make sure I've got a maximum, don't exceed a maximum pipe length. I'll say OK there. So once I've added those in, I, have to, I can edit them now this way. So in this section here, I'll say maximum cover. Maybe I want to make sure it's 5 meters maximum. Maximum slope, I'll leave at uh, 8. And for my max minimum cover, I want to make sure I go to my design guidelines. And in my design guidelines, I can check out things for minimum cover, which it tells me the minimum cover for storm sewers is 1.2 in this case. So I'll use that value uh, under my minimum cover option. Add in minimum cover and uh, my minimum slope. For, so for a 300 millimeter PVC I want to make sure I go to my design guidelines 
and uh, check out what that minimum slope is going to be. So I go to the section for my minimum design slopes. I find 300. I take a look, make sure I'm looking under the PVC column. And it looks like my minimum slope for a PVC pipe is 0.32. So there I'm just going to fill in the uh, 0.32 as my minimum slope. And my length check, uh, my maximum length is going to be based again on my design guidelines. Uh, let's see, our distance between manholes maximum is 185 meters. So I don't want any of my pipe lengths getting longer than that, and I'll set that value to be my maximum pipe length. So this rule will now be applied to all my 300 millimeter PVC. So what I want to do is I want to make a rule for each one of these. So if I know that my next pipe size is a 375 millimeter PVC, I can right click on that uh, existing pipe rule and say copy and this time I'll just change it. I'll say I want this to be for a 375 PVC and set my rules accordingly. So most of this stuff will be the same, things like the depth and the cover. The slope will be the only thing that changes. So again, I'll have to come back to my design guidelines, check on my design slopes. So for a 375 millimeter PVC, my slope is going to be 0.24%. And I'll just supplement that in there, 0.24. And what I'll do is I'll put it for each one of those. Okay, you want to do the same for your structures as well, so you'll need some rules for those. So under your structures section in your settings tab, go to the structure rule set. We usually have three different types of rules for our structures. We have, uh, well, we can go to our pipe drop section and we can see that uh, it'll give us options here. So it'll say uh, where no change in a diameter is uh, being caused then we'll have a 60 millimeter drop uh, which is a 90 degree bend or greater um, and then also as well uh, where we have a straight pipe coming straight through that'll be a 30 millimeter drop so there's those two uh, options we'll have there that's for the uh, same size pipe and for pipe uh, we'll have a match crowns rule for that so we'll have three different rules for our pipe drops and we can create those in here so under my structures I'm going to right click on my rule set I'm going to go new and I'll make the first one for a 0 0.03 meter pipe drop and then in my rules tab I'll add a rule and uh, I'll use pipe drop across structure I can't change it in here but I can say OK and then edit it here. So I want to make the drop reference. We always measure from our invert values. And here we'll have a 0 0.03 meter drop when we're coming straight through. I'll leave the maximum drop at 45 degrees, uh, or sorry, at uh, 3 meters, and then say OK. And I'll make another rule for a 0 0.06 drop. So where I have bends that are greater than 45 degrees, I'll right click uh, here, go copy, and I'll change that rule to a point. 0 0.06 meter drop and I'll edit the rule accordingly so that my pipe drop is going to be 0 0.06 meters okay now I need one last one for when I have a different size pipe I want to match the crown for when I have a larger outgoing pipe than my incoming pipe I'll come right click on one of these again go copy and I'll just call this one match crowns and what I'll do is I'll say apply and then go to my rules and this time I want to make sure I match the crown so my drop elevation is going to change to a crown and my actual drop value is going to be zero and that'll match up my elevations on my crown which means my invert elevation for my outgoing pipe should be lower and I'll say okay so now what I want to do I've got all my rules created now we want to come into our pipe network and find our parts list and we want to apply those rules to the particular parts so on the pipes tab I've got two tabs up on the top pipes and structures I'll start at pipes I go to the for instance the 525 concrete pipe and uh, select my 525 concrete pipe rule so I'll select 525 and then just do the same all the way down for this list here for my uh, sorry my 
600 millimeter pipe and any other sizes that I have. And I'll also do the same for the structures. So under the structures I will go to my rules. If you only have one structure then you can pick any one of these. Match crowns is usually the most common. Say OK. Uh, usually of your three rules, those your structure, three structure rules, that one would be the one you want to use. So when you're all done your rules and you're all done your parts list, what you should have uh, to finish things off is you should have some concrete pipe with all your different pipe sizes that you're going to need with your rules that are mapped to those particular pipe sizes. So for each one of those you'll have something listed like this. That way the rules that you came up with should show you, should be applied to those particular types of pipe sizes. Okay, And the same thing goes for the structures. In your structures, you can map whatever type of rule that you want to uh, to work with. And like I say, you can always change this stuff whenever you like. So now that you've got a parts list and you've got some rules applied to those lists, now you can go ahead and start laying out some pipe uh, and structures quite easily. All right, thanks.